What's happening, boxing fans? It is Dr. Bring It. A lot of things on my mind right now. It is Monday. The Monday after the mega fight between Sean Porter and Errol Spence Jr. And by now, the boxing world probably already knows who won this fight. Split decision going for Errol Spence Jr. Now, you know what, it, it would be very unfair for me to just state that only without really talking about what transpired that night. A lot of stuff happened. But first of all, before we get into it, I'd like to congratulate Sean Porter and his camp for putting together an awesome training camp. You absolutely proved that you went in to bring your A game to Errol Spence Jr. And that's exactly what you did. Secondly, congratulations to Errol Spence Jr. for proving to be the elite fighter that not too many people um, had believed you were. Let me explain. A lot of people had thought that uh, Errol Spence Jr. was very just overrated. But those who really kind of understand the game of boxing saw something special in Errol Spence Jr. Um, of course, just like any other great fighter out there, greatness is definitely measured by a lot of different things. And to a lot of doubters out there, a lot of skeptical people out there uh, didn't quite believe that Errol Spence Jr. really had it. But after this fight, I think it would be safe to say that Errol Spence Jr. proved to be the elite fighter that he, he really was, that I, in my humble opinion, thought that he was. Thirdly, congratulations to all the people out there, all the boxing fans who had paid for a pay-per-view fight top dollar here in the States, it was $75. Um, so congratulations to you because you were rewarded with some top-notch quality boxing. So what exactly happened? That night, uh, I just want to start off uh, the analysis by saying, uh, in the immortal words of Mike Tyson, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Now, why do I like that quote so much? Because in life, nothing really seems to go as planned. You can plan all you want, but all it takes is just one little obstacle that sets you back a little bit. And at that moment, you get tested and that's when your true colors will shine. So I'm not saying that Errol Spence Jr. actually went into the, uh, into the fight against Sean Porter thinking that he wasn't going to be in a dogfight because all of his interviews approaching this fight, he was always saying that to Sean Porter, that he was going to take him to deep waters and drown him. He was gonna be bringing the dogfight. Well, I'll tell you this, Sean Porter, was the one who brought that dogfight into that match that night. But Errol Spence Jr. kept his poise. I don't really remember seeing at any point in time where he struggled, where he was truly legitimately in trouble. He never seemed lost. He always looked in control. Um, even when he took some really hard shots against Porter. Now those two, they were landing some pretty heavy shots against each other. But I honestly think, based on my prediction, I honestly think it just boiled down to, once again, fundamentals. Sean Porter, yes, he was absolutely relentless. Um, he knew how to close the distance really effectively using an explosive long range jab. Um, then he banged to the body, you know, trying to equalize 
and, and try to contain Errol Spence Jr., trying to get his power out, try, try, to, try to take his lungs away from him. I think all of that was really affected by Sean Porter. But what happened was, I think ultimately, the downfall of Sean Porter was his defense. Sean Porter was able to, to get in. He was able to, to, to deliver a lot of hooks to the body, a lot of hooks to the head. Um, but in doing so, if you, if you guys get the chance to, to, to watch that fight again, Every time he's about to throw a big punch, he puts everything into his punches, first of all. But when he does, he opens up. He opens up. Drops his hands, opens up. And when you do that, you're just like inviting counter punching, um, which is exactly how he got, uh, how he got knocked down on the, uh, on the 11th round. Now it wasn't like he wasn't like lay down straight, but he was definitely caught, definitely caught off guard, and uh, and he put his gloves down. Now if you if you looked at his face, at his eyes, he was he was really out. But it was his his grit, his tough chin that was he that he was able to just kind of collect himself and and uh, still get up. And he was like right after that happened, he was like, come on, come on. You know, I was just like, oh my gosh, like these guys are just really, really going for broke. Uh, and that happened on the 11th round. And a lot of the, a lot of the commentators, they, um, they had them pretty even um, at that point. I honestly think that at that point, um, I still think that Errol Spence Jr. still had significant enough of points on the card to still pull out the win even without the the knockdown. Um, now a lot of people probably will disagree with me on that because Sean Porter had proved to constantly press forward, press forward. But a lot of the things that, that people don't see is while he was going in, while they were being tied up a lot, Errol Spence Jr. was able to deliver a lot of effective punches to the body and to the head using his jab. Um, a lot of the shots that Sean Porter had delivered while they were clinched up and wrestling in there, they were actually being blocked by Errol Spence Jr. because Errol Spence Jr. has fundamentally better defense than Sean Porter. So a lot of those shots that Sean had delivered they were actually being blocked a lot. Now, did he get, uh, did he connect to Errol Spence? Absolutely he did. They were both really connecting really well, but overall, when you look at it, um, I'm not a diehard believer of the CompuBox numbers. I think they're a little bit, you know, conspiracy, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, um, but if you look at those numbers, you would see that Errol Spence Jr. did connect more uh, and of course, while they were not in, in clinched, you know, and they, were, they weren't fighting inside, um, Errol Spence Jr. was outlanding him like on the outside, which is why Sean Porter would not have wanted to be on the outside. This really was Sean Porter's uh, advantage to try to get Spence up onto the ropes, to fight on the inside and just bang away at the body. Um, and I'll tell you this, based on the commentary that I was listening to that night, they weren't giving Sean Porter um, the benefit of the doubt that his body shots were, were actually being affected. They were affecting Errol Spence Jr. Errol Spence Jr. really had no choice but to respect Sean Porter's power. Because I, I believe even in the, the, the post um, interview, um, he knew that uh, Sean Porter had dangerous power, which is why I believe he had to respect Sean and, uh, and cover up and defend himself. Now, on the flip side, I don't think Sean Porter was respecting Errol Spence Jr.'s power, which is why he was just going in head first. He was super focused on what he wanted to do 
that he didn't cover himself up effectively enough. Yes, he went in, he was roughing up uh, Errol Spence Jr. pretty, pretty well, um, but I think he was so hell-bent, so determined to get on the inside that he just, he just threw away his defense. He was getting really, he, he was getting connected pretty easily that night against uh, Errol Spence Jr. So here's another thing. Now everyone wants to talk about what's next. I honestly think Sean Porter, he deserves a rematch. Um, I would love to see a Sean Porter, Al Spence Jr. rematch come like the beginning of next year. I would love to see that because this of course was a split decision. I can't believe that another judge had said that the, that the score was that much. Um, I, I don't believe that. I, I know that it could have been very, very close, but to have a judge give, um, give Porter 115 or even 116, um, I, I don't know where that really came from, but hey, that's boxing, right? Um, or maybe that was the, uh, that's what was needed to uh, achieve a possible rematch. Um, I'm all about conspiracy theories anyway, just because uh, I guess it's good for business, right? Um, so I would love to see a rematch, but if we don't see a rematch, I know people are definitely um, looking for Spence to fight Manny Pacquiao. That is really the obvious, because since Manny Pacquiao won the fight against Thurman, now all eyes were set on this fight. Errol Spence Jr. and Porter. So now that Errol Spence Jr. has come out of this fight as the victor, everyone wants to see him fight Manny Pacquiao. But here's another interesting little, little thing that came up. Who came into the ring right after the fight was over? It wasn't Manny Pacquiao. Guess who it was? Danny Garcia hungry he wants the big fights he wants to prove himself worthy to be running and banging with all the elite people out there he saw what what errol spence jr was uh, able to do against sean porter is that enough are people going to be looking at errol spence jr and saying "Ooh, we found holes in errol spence jr's game well guess what Yes, we might have seen some holes in Errol Spence Jr.'s game because Sean Porter exposed those things by taking it right to him, going into a kind of dogfight that we didn't expect Errol Spence Jr. to be able to handle. But the fact of the matter is, he handled himself with poise. He was disciplined enough to show some, some effective defense in the line of fire, he absolutely proved himself. Errol Spence Jr. proved himself to be called an elite fighter that is not overrated, in my opinion. Um, I honestly think that, again, in my humble opinion, I didn't see the creativity from Errol Spence Jr. that I wanted to see in this fight. But that's only because I believe Sean Porter disrupted him and put him on the defense. And he didn't have the opportunity to really show his creativity, but he did show his ability to adapt. He was able to show an in-game that he could bang with people on the inside. He could turn people to, to the ropes and bang with them. He can tie people up and try to negate and, uh, and neutralize. He showed all that stuff. Um, the fight, yes, was going back and forth. Sean Porter definitely took it to him. Sean Porter really showed that he is a man and a fighter and a warrior of grit. Um, but again, 
Errol Spence Jr. proved to be the more fundamentally sound, more disciplined fighter, and that's the reason why he was able to come out with the win. So those are my thoughts about this fight. I'll probably come up with another video to talk about the possibility of Spence going up against a Manny Pacquiao. Um, but just, just before we end this video, I just want to throw it out there. Who do you think's a better infighter uh, between Porter and Manny Pacquiao? Do you think that Manny Pacquiao, when he's on the inside, can throw all of the different angles and sneaky speed and sneaky power over Sean Porter? What do you guys think about that fight? between Manny Pacquiao and Sean Porter. What if that actually happens? Do you think Sean Porter will be able to, to win uh, against Manny Pacquiao? These are all the different scenarios that, that make this sport very, very, very interesting. All of these, these styles and, and matchups. So chime in, let me know what you guys think. I'm sure you guys are like still on your high on this fight. I mean, like, I was just like, it was just an unbelievable match between these two. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I'd love to, to share some, some of your insight to our forum. Uh, please like the video. Please share the video with other boxing enthusiasts out there. And until then, we'll talk to you soon.